Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me for another spirit review video. And today we're going to be reviewing the 200th anniversary edition bottlings coming to us from Lagavulin. Now, Lagavulin, celebrating that 200th anniversary, did release the 8 year old a few months back. And I was getting asked to please review the 8. So I, I, I wanted to, but I also wanted to wait till the second half of that equation came out, that being the 12 year old 200th anniversary. So here we're going to do them side by side. Now, thanks to note differences being A, of course, maturation, 8 to 12 years, but also ABVs. This is not cast strength. This is bottled at 96 proof. This is cast strength at 115.4. Now, there's also a price difference. Uh, the 8 year old ran around, I guess it's around. Ugh, 55-ish upwards to probably 65 here in Texas to whereas the Log 12 cast strength has had a little jump uh, in price even from the previous incarnations or previous vintages of Log 12. We're now up to about 125 all the way to 150-ish. So big jump there, but it is cast strength Lagavulin, right? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get to the actual nosing now. We're going to see what the differences are between the two. One thing I will say, uh, let's, well, let's look at that real quick. Look at the color difference. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but that is a very, very pale straw. Very pale. That's almost, if I was trying to describe it as something, I would say that looks like Sauvignon Blanc in the glass. And the Log 12 definitely has more color to it. It's heading into a, a little bit of a deeper golden straw, but... Hey, if you want to keep the wine references going, I would say that's more like a Chardonnay. This is more of the color of a Sauvignon Blanc. Okay, to the nose, Lagavulin 8. Again, 96 proof. Oh, it's so nice on the nose. This thing is just vanilla, buttercream, caramel. A little bit of a banana aspect to it. Some mixed berries. A little bit of a peach or a plum aspect going on as well. Cinnamon, cardamom. Beyond that, then you're just left with a really nice briny smoke. And it's very clean. It's not ashy. It's not sooty or coming off like a... Sometimes it'll get chemically, almost like an asphalt. It's not doing that. It's very, very clean brine smoke. Uh, almost hints at a smoked meat character. Um, really, really nice complex nose. Now, before I start nosing the 12, I will say this Log 8 bottle has been opened for a few months. This thing, from the day I got it, I cracked it. It's been oxidizing ever since, so it's had time to open up. I did not want to gas it. I want to see how it's going to develop in the bottle. Um, so that's how come I'm just kind of running that experiment. Now, eventually, it probably will hit a point where it starts dropping off. But then I'll know, you know, if I ever crack another bottle of it, let's make sure we, you know, let it oxidize for this amount of time and then we gas it. All right. So right here, we're at two and a half months. It's doing very, very well. Log 12, I, like I said, I just opened that probably two days ago. And it's, it's similar, but it is tighter. I can tell that it's. While it has a similar nose characteristics that the 8 did, it's just, it's falling off. It's, it's more muted, all right? Still everything's there. I mean, it's, you do have the vanilla, that, that little bit of that buttercream, a bigger cinnamon. I would say that the, the peaches, or maybe, yeah, it's peaches. I was almost going to say apricot, but I think it's more peach type aspect. Is still here. Maybe even a little bit of a doughiness, a little bit of a doughy malt character. The brine in with the smoke still here on the nose. But I'm thinking this is either going to need time or it's going to definitely need water. One of the two. If you can't wait for it to oxidize in the bottle, then add water to it. Okay. But we're going to see if the palate uh, still shows that. Oh, log 8. It's incredible at that ABV. It's spot on. I don't even want to add any water to this. It's the right viscosity. It's a good medium, just above medium viscosity. It is 
it's vanilla and a little buttercream and a little caramel. Again, that banana in with all that is kind of almost like a banana's fosters. Um, and then you, oh, the cinnamon level on the mid palate, just spot perfect. It's a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of cardamom, a little bit of clove in with this one. The lemon peels, the mixed berries in, a little bit of that peach character coming through. And it still develops on the palate. Like even as all those players come in and present themselves, as it rolls over and you start getting that, again, briny smoke character coming in, it's very filling, um, but nobody's out of balance. It's just, it's spot on. And then when you get to the back end, then it starts getting this, the, the peat starts getting a little bit ashy on the back end. The very back end, you can start imagining cigar ash, a little bit of tobacco. And if we chew on it, I'm not getting peaches anymore. I'm almost getting a plum character on the back end. It's very light, but I think it's in there. All right. Lagavulin 12. Oh, that's, like I said, I really enjoy that log eight. Okay. Okay, a little more oily. Definitely bigger cinnamon. Definitely has the lemon peel. So it kind of enters, it's not as sweet. It's, um, I mean, a little bit of that buttercream, a little bit of that vanilla, a little of the caramel. Big cinnamon swell. In with the cinnamon, not so much clove. Cardamom is in there. The fruit characters, a little more berries than I think peaches on this one. A little more berries than peach. I was getting more peach here. I don't know, it's, when I'm focusing on that peach character, it's kind of like a peach apricot, maybe almost like a, um, a marmalade type aspect to it. And then once you get past that big cinnamon swell with a little bit of that cardamom in with it, and you start getting, focusing a little more on that smoke on the back end, it's a little more of a, a little briny smoked meat character is in this one, but it's, Again, it's not, it's not super focused on that. Everything is kind of balancing pretty nicely, except for that cinnamon. That's a little bit out of balance for me. Again, I think that's going to need time. But we're going to, for the video's sake, we're going to add four drops of water to that. Kind of see if it opens up a little bit. Let me give it a little bit of a aeration. Try to speed that process up. Now I don't expect a lot of oak coming through. I mean, these are young whiskeys, so you're not gonna get a big heavy oak character jumping out just because you add some water. It shouldn't do that. All right, now we're starting to see it. Man, the lemon peel just starts popping when you add the water. Lemon peels and that vanilla character kind of sweetened up. Cinnamon kind of is in there. It's backing off the ABV drop. So now you're It's a little more balanced now All right, let's taste it All right now we're getting somewhere Still very very viscous Much more balanced it brought that cinnamon level back down so now we're getting into the character here, maybe a little more oily. But I will say this, it's not as sweet. So this one's more sweet, um, citrusy, little peaches. This one's a little more typical, what I kind of got on the 2014 with a little 2013 vintage. 2013 was very ashy, um, a little more focused on the peat. The 2014 and the 2015 
actually started focusing more on the fruits. This is almost a direct split for me between the 2014, 15, and the 13. It's a little bit of both worlds. Because on the back end, it definitely does start focusing more on the smoke. But that vanilla lemon peel thing is just phenomenal. Cinnamon cardamom, really nice. Brine in there, no medicinal qualities, nothing offensive again. I just really think that bottle is gonna need time. Once that opens up for probably two, three months, uh, it's really gonna hit its stride and that cinnamon is gonna back down a little bit. And then even then, it's still gonna be high ABV. So if you wanted to add water, then you're probably really gonna bring something beautiful out of that whiskey. Uh, either way, I don't think you're doing a bad thing if you buy either one of these. Uh, so if you see them on the shelves, it's probably worth picking up at their price points. Um, again, Lagavulin did a good job for the 200th anniversary edition bottlings. Um, they should be proud of both. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Keep leaving those great comments. Uh, everybody have a great evening and cheers.